Okay, it's dude first. This is six scale. All right. So um pretty much just wanted to review. So we've got um did you so have you Can we merge this LA? I think uh, is this yeah. is the data. Okay. Oh, yeah, maybe right. I, right, quick. Not something to get here. Um. So I I wanted to take some time to. If I've not uploaded data to my personal uh, website, so um, I was hoping that we are in a good place now to automate all of that in this repository. So just wanted to review that and spend some time today discussing what things are needed in order to get that yeah agree um this is just the results you generated manually right yeah okay all right we can pull these in okay those are merged so Mm, I generated these results using uh, the script in PR 2787 that's on the agenda talk. Okay. So this if you look is, at, okay, this is the project infra. Okay, so we need to get a swim last week. Yeah. So that script just calls the uh, the perf report creator and um, it has all the metrics that we care about uh, notice on line 22 and onwards the graphing commands are commented out i've done that purposefully because um, it looks like the suggested workflow is that we scrape the data and gather it into weekly report and push it into the benchmark um, repository. From there, we will have a post to submit job that will run this weekly graph and add things uh, like add the graph to, um, to that repository. That's the proposed workflow. So this script ideally will be useful in uh, 2773 PR. That's the job uh, to scrape data. So do we need to make a change from this or no? Is it all set once we- Yeah, we can, uh, I've commented on this PR that once uh, the script, script.sh merge, merges, we can use that here. Okay, great. Okay, so we want this first. Okay, so let's, um, yes. all right. We need to ask Daniel this to, and uh, Brian to take a look then, see if we can get this one in and then we'll follow up and we'll change this here. Good, okay. Yeah. So I think ho this will make things really easy for, um, for populating the data. Okay. Good. Uh, this one, yeah, this one. I mean, we'll, we'll just need to. So we, anyway, we got our plan. We got. We're gonna go here, then we're gonna go change here, and then we want to get this merged. And then I think we have our. As then, do we have our job? So we have. Um, so post a job with plot graph from the above data. So this generates the job. Um, uh, and automatically, so this gets the job, and it automatically posts the data in our repo, right? So. Yeah. Um, from okay. there, we need to plot it. So um, plotting, we, we need another job in the new repo to plot the data. Okay. Uh, that will call the weekly plot subcommand and th that will be, so there is some discussion needed on this, right? Currently, the weekly plot subcommand uh, will plot for all the directories in uh, weekly report um, 
directory, right? So let's say the density job has one year worth of data. It will plot all of those uh, one year's worth of data. Um, ideally, like we need to decide on a number, let's say last three months or last six months or something like that uh, to make sure that the plot is uh, within the reasonable time limit. Um, and we, the, the convention I was using was to um, eight weeks in, in my personal um, plots in, in my personal website. So just wanted to have that discussion. What would be the right number of the, what would be the right um, timeline of the data we, we should be looking at? Three months? Yeah, that sounds three months, I guess. I mean, that the other test repo has like, does like a year or two or something. It's it's way longer. What we can, um, I mean, it, as far as I'm concerned, like, so we want, so I guess we, I guess it maybe depends how we want to look at it. So if we post like a, a graph that's in the readme there, I mean, I don't, I mean, we could do, we probably want to do cross releases, right? So six months, mm -hmm. well, the last two releases, so six months. So I think maybe that's what we want, six months. Okay. Yeah, then, then that's, then I think there needs to be a small change. Yeah, right there where I need to add a flag of the time releases and plot it for six months, right? Um, okay, wait, hold on, my math's wrong. Eight months, because we're doing three releases here, right? So it's um, eight. Every four months is a release. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then that'll do. I think that I think that's what we want because then I think we do this in terms of releases. It makes the most sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, I will take that as an action item. I will have that in like I'll create a PR for that soon. And okay. I think uh, for two seven eight seven, uh, you so the PR for uh, setting up owner ref owners just for the perf report. Uh, directory is has merged, so you should have the rights to. Um, oh, I should be able to merge. Group. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Oh, yes, see. yes. That way we can iterate faster. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot where that was. So uh, this isn't it, right? Wait. No, 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 no. It's in the. It, um, it's in the same directory. It's uh, in the same directory. Robots command. So I should see it in here. Oh yeah, here you got it right here. Yeah. Oh, sweet. So great. Okay, cool. That's great. This will help uh, help us iterate. All right, so I can review this. We don't need um, um, we don't need a call in the Calvary. So all right, I'll take a look at this, and we can um, I mean, uh, and we can get this merged quickly, and then um, go over to Daniel's PR and just make sure everything is good there, yeah. and um, make the change that to support the scripts. Okay, cool. So we're close here. This is good. So we just a few a few little things and and um and uh, I think we're gonna be yeah like the next yeah. week or two it sounds like we're gonna have these plots. Cool. Yep. Okay. So one more thing I wanted to I have an excellent item but I have not gotten a chance to get there is um we will so once all of these things are in place, the next thing we would need is some kind of um, static website to um, you know, render this automatically. Either mm -hmm. we can do that in CI performance benchmark repository or in a separate, uh, separate GitHub page uh, rendering repository. Um, I just need to look at the logistics. So that's another action item for me. Um, okay. Yeah. We but can do this that one. Would be the, yeah, we can do this one last. Oh, I mean, that's what you're about to say. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that one last. I think that's this is a good one to have. But then, um, yeah, we get these all this stuff in place, then then we can have that discussion. Sure. Yeah. 
Cool. Okay. Sounds good, Alay. All right. This is all good progress. Okay. I think then let's go to, okay, six scale for V1. So we are, I mean, we're going to touch on some of the, some of the similar concepts here. So we basically want to have, right. So this is, we just went over them all. So we, we have, okay, this is done, I think, right? Yeah. I think this is done. Yeah. We set up our honors final. Um, and then these are our last three. Okay. So we, we've covered it already. Okay. And then um, exporting the artifacts folder. I think this is the only, so 2773 we spoke about. Yeah, this one. Okay. This one is, um, oh, I should be able to merge this. Wait, did we, I fixed the owner's folder, right? I should be able to merge this too. <laughs> okay. Let me take a look at this because I think this is, this is also done. We just need to, I just didn't have the approval before. I think that's what it was, right? I don't know if I put yeah. approval on it. I don't know if I did. No, I didn't. But I, I think uh, I remember that was a problem somewhere. So I this looks fine to me. I mean, we we'd already discussed this at length, and it was makes sense. So um, I'll just take a look and make sure that this that I, everything's everything's good with the approval and or the owner's file, and I'll put an approval on this. This looks fine. Okay, good. So this is uh, where did my tab go? Okay. Um, Okay, I mean, that's all we had. I think it's just those. So this is, gives us um, this gives us the density job, right? Gets in the artifacts folder. Okay, so then we can start scraping it just like we were doing before with the other jobs. Okay. I mean, that PR uh, will just make sure that we don't have to uh, work on regex forever. So yeah, that's what, that's eight what I mean. Months we used down the, the road, yeah, exactly. we should be able to deprecate. Yeah. Um, yep. One thing I wanted to bring up uh, that I don't have on the agenda is yeah. um, so in some of the downstream uh, scale testing, I, I, I ran into cases where Qbert creates, sorry, specifically word handler creates some amount of uh, watch calls to secrets API. Um, the Says word handler. Yes. Okay. The watch call is not very expensive because it specifically uh, filters for the owner VMI. Mm -hmm. So the events will be limited to one secret. But I wanted to raise this here. I am not sure why that watch call for a specific secret is required. So for example, if there is a lot of churn and if, if users are creating and deleting VMIs with uh, secrets on a regular interval, then you will see a regular flurry of watch calls since the watch call is wired to fire on, on a VMI, right? Um, so I was wondering if we can identify why this is needed and somehow um, remove this by, by one global watch. So let's say, so idea is that if word handler can have a watch for all secrets, right? And as soon as a new secret comes up, um, it will get that event. Um, then we don't need to, then it will be a long standing watch. We don't need to make a new uh, call for a new VMI. I'm wondering, so, uh, I'm wondering if we, if this is upstream actually. Wait, so you, 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 so you mentioned this at the time. I wonder if this actually exists upstream because there is a, I know we had a change we did downstream where we had or we are yeah. watching the secrets for to make changes to them. Is that is that what it is? I don't think, it's that's, not... upstream. I don't think that's upstream. Uh, that's so that secret was added by me two years ago downstream. If oh, we didn't oh, put that thing upstream, then that's not upstream. Uh, okay. Did we put that thing upstream? I did not. No, I thought this is coming from an upstream. Okay, did not have that context. Yeah, that was just the. Uh, the downstream requirement where where we have to 
constantly doing secrets. So that, so yeah, so that's for that. Got it. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I did not know that. Uh, maybe then. But like, do you think? Um, do you think like even for downstream, your, do you think uh your suggestions could make sense? Let's say having a global secret somewhere else, um, uh, instead of having for each pair handlers. Yeah. Because the reason uh, why we um, because the reason why this uh, um this uh controller it's invert handler so that it's uh it's for the it's for the ver handler to issue this uh, RPC call to this ver to this ver mantra pod. So that's why it's in ver handler. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Um. Let's discuss this in um. Okay. In a separate call, I think. If we find a way to eliminate n um, secret watches with one watch um, feeded by events, then it might be more efficient, but um, we'll, we'll, we can discuss more. Okay. I'll look at this. Good. Uh... Um, okay, so I think uh, we'll go to this next. This is, um, oh, let me just put the link in there. Sure. So this is what we discussed with uh, upstream Kubernetes 6 scale. Um, I just took a crack at uh, putting together a little, um, our few thoughts on this. Um, I think there's a, there's, there's still a lot to do here. And I think sort of, two things that I was trying to get out of this. And one of them is to just enumerate the number of, or the, uh, the different metrics that are existing today. And I, and you can see like with it, there's a common theme for a lot of these are, they're very focused on like your end to end latency or um, uh, like things that are in the aggregate. Um, we look at them and we see like a lot of things are uh, let's see what else duration of time seeing a pod first time to the pod starting to run right so this is another another aggregate so like we don't have that 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 breakdown of all the different steps that go into it right and this is this is really the point that we we're making is that there's value in actually knowing information about what went into each of those steps and and in the sort of the, the idea is there's two perspectives here and the way that the, the uh, Kubernetes upstream six scale, like it's my understanding is that they want to look at this, they want to say, okay, this is what they care about, right? We want to, we want to know how long it takes a pod to run, right? And we want to quickly tell, like we made this change, it got faster, it got slower, it makes total sense. And, and so our perspective is that, okay, we also want to see, we also want that too, but we also want to see the, the individual phase transitions, right? The, all the different things that happen underneath. And so it's just a more granular view, right? We could look at a code and say a piece of code and, and say, okay, this change happened. And okay, it got faster or slower, but we could also see that, okay, it got, where did it get faster or slower? And so there's there's value in that. And, and that's something that um, that we, you can see just by the existing metrics that um, that there, there's something we can improve on. And so all I wanted to do is like, there's a lot of ways we can look at uh, approach to actually doing this. But all I did here is just looked at this in terms of one API, and this is just with volumes, or two APIs, PVs and PVCs, but specifically related to volumes. And um, put down a few thoughts as to like, as how we could do this. And, and so the thing that was interesting when I was thinking about this is phase transitions, when we do today in Qvert, right? We look at VM, VMIs, they only go one direction, right? We only go from, from pending all the way to to running and eventually to succeed, right? It's a, it's it's like a finite state machine. We go from one end to another. With things like EVs, these things are bi-directional, and so that you can go from 
something being used to not being used and the object could still exist and then that's and that's that's fine that's a, that's a normal way of things the life cycle of the object and so this is a challenge and uh and to sort of having to deal with how can we document these phases like we transitioned from one phase to another but we can also go back and then we can also return right so we need to know what e each phase has to do with you know, whatever it is that we're doing um and so the thought was is that we could take these bi-directional phase transition objects and we can tie them to one that's similar to like a VMI or like pod, something that's unidirectional. And so the idea was that we could take something like, um, uh, we could take something like PV or PVC and we could even tie them, we could tie PVs to PVCs. We could tie PVs and PVCs to pods. Um, and the way we do that is, is maybe we'd have like a metric, the way we post the metric is that it would be in, a, in in relation to a pod or something like in you know a specific pod, um, and we have to see how that would work in the in terms of like how the metrics are reported if that makes sense. But in my mind, it made at least from the the way we post status and the way we talk about posting status for phase transition times, it was kind of interesting when when thinking about it this way um, because it, it kind of comes out like this 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 picture right here where this looks very similar today what we have on VMIs. Uh, but we have for for PVCs and PVs, and we just take you know whenever these different PVs or PVCs go through these phases, we post the timestamp. Um, uh, we we basically take those timestamps, and we hold on to them until you know the till the time's right to post them on the on the pod. And this made a lot of sense to me because most people are really I would say a lot of a lot of workloads really are or I guess or I should say pretty much every workload, right? It's gonna use a pod. It's sort of the base workload in Kubernetes. And so it makes a lot of sense that really PVs and PVCs, PVCs are just add-ons to pods. And so the pod is really what we care about. And so it'd be interesting to see if, if how these would look if they were placed on the pod in the status and how useful they'd be. And so in my mind, when I look at a pod, when I crack open a pod, I'd see, okay, Here's how long it took for my my PV and PVC to be attached to that pod. Um, so from like from that perspective, it made a lot of sense. But I don't know. We need to look at this in in terms of other you know how this works in terms of Prometheus. If this makes sense, how well that metrics the number of metrics will scale, and um, and even just like the data that we post in the pod. I think there's a, there could be other corner cases here as well. So. That was just my thoughts on like how we could do this and maybe it could be we, we don't do it with pods or some other way, but um, those were just the initial thoughts on, on an approach. Um, yeah, did someone have a comment? Is... Yeah. I actually, yeah, yeah, I had, sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, so um, I was gonna say, um, this makes sense in terms of troubleshooting, right? So that means that we can just look at a pod, see, um, see, uh, see when, like when the volume gets ready. But I think um, from a benchmarking perspective, um, I feel like uh, like having Prometheus metrics for benchmarking will make more sense because we can like aggregate for um for like all pods in a cluster over a period of time and then we can track it and see if there's any issue with performance um at a, like at any point of time um so so like i will say from a uh, from a benchmark perspective um like prometheus metrics would be um, like would be a preferred options but i do see the value of like adding these in the prospect as well yeah, I, I agree, Shang. I so my perspective on this was that we would do both. Like I, I guess what I'm showing here is like since I haven't I haven't thought through fully the Prometheus side of things and sort of how it would look yet. But my my when I'm saying like when you know when posting this stuff on status, my expectation is the equivalent is also in Prometheus. The only thing that um um yeah, like I said, I haven't I just haven't posted what that would look like yet on Prometheus, but it would be both. I, because for the two reasons you mentioned, like everyone uses Prometheus, right? We, this is a great tool and, and that should be our primary target. The value of this is is like the, the 
well, it's just, that's that part you just mentioned, you can crack open a pod and look at it and see. And, and so it gets all those corner cases where like, oh, I don't use Prometheus, which I mean, in production would be weird if you don't, but it, you talk about like tooling and, and developer tooling. Like you think about testing, you would be required to stand up Prometheus in order to do your testing. In some cases, people don't do that. And we, we even had cases where we don't do that. So it's fine. Like if you have, if you want to have tooling around this stuff. So it's, this is sort of meant to get the corner cases, but the reason I'm presenting it this way is that, is that it, it really makes a lot of sense when I sort of communicated in terms of pods. And, and so that's what I was hoping that we could do as sort of our, 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 our data packet is, is sort of, is communicate this in terms, in terms of a pod in Prometheus and on the object. So yeah, makes I sense. I agree. That's, that part makes yep. sense, Ryan. Uh, but do you see, uh, you see that it will be like a little bit challenging um, getting this API change approved in, in Kubernetes? Uh, the reason why I wonder about that is the upstream API convention documentation specifically says that for making APIs evolve nicely over time, they want to drive away from phase and phase related things in status. Um, okay. That keeping that in mind and then tying the um, transition times of uh, volume API into a pod will will kind of bleed some of the implementation issues of one API into another. So because of those two reasons, I feel like it would be much harder to um, accept, like it would be much harder for us to get this change accepted in the status API. So um, I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are regarding that. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think like the, the, to me, like my, my thought is that um, I, I like, it doesn't matter to me where this is. I, it doesn't, um, doesn't make really a difference in, in my mind. I, I, the kind of the way that sort of the, the thing that is most valuable to me is when I look at this is I, I can see very clearly what is happening with, you know, my attachments to my workload. And that like, that's where, that's what's really interesting. Um, maybe that doesn't make sense in terms of the way that the API is, is structured and the way the community approaches it. I don't know. And, and like, well, that's kind of what I wanted to find out. It's like, we're at, the idea is we're adding fields and kind of the way I was thinking about this, about like all the stuff that Kubernetes did on server side apply and all that, like all the data that was added to, to objects, like there's still stuff that is being added to objects. You know, maybe there's a way we can do the same. Maybe, maybe it doesn't go into status. Maybe it goes somewhere else. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think like, I mean, I'm pretty flexible to that, like where it goes. It's just mostly what I, at least from my perspective is that we just want to have this somewhere, but I don't know. I mean, it could be, out, maybe this ends up on the PVC. Maybe it ends up in, in annotations. Maybe it ends up somewhere else. Um, I, I don't know. I think what at least my thought was is that we would have an opinion on where we think it should go, and then you know let's let's talk with um, the stakeholders and let's. I mean, I because I don't know all the reasons. Like I don't know all the reasons why we shouldn't do in status. So I mean, well, it's fine. Maybe yeah. people will tell us, and then we can find. You know, we can work around that. I think that that's at least what my plan was: is that we can we have a dialogue about it and. Maybe it doesn't end up with status. Maybe it ends up somewhere else, and that's that's okay. It's, I mean, I, I'm not really, I'm not really tied to it being there. It's just an example. Yeah, makes sense. So personally, my opinion is that um, I would much rather see it in Prometheus than in um, in the uh, status object because the way all of these controllers are wired up, it's hard to 
implement this in um, in a consistent, correct way across all CSI implementations and things like that, right? So I was uh, more thinking of putting it in Prometheus, but I have not spent a lot of time thinking it through. So, um, so here's like here's what I'm thinking with that. So I, what I'm hearing is like this is a lot of work. And it's going to take a lot of work to actually pull this off. And I understand that. And and so where we talk about putting this in Prometheus, right? At the point in time that we make this timestamp, that excuse me, that piece of code that we're doing it, and basically what what we would need, and and. Like we'd have to put whatever it's easy, right? We could just have a, a right after we find that that we've gone from you know gone into pending or something, right? We could take a timestamp and we post it to Prometheus, right? So not that's not too hard to visualize. The part that gets tricky here, which is what you're getting at, is that we need to take this and this, the field and value, and we need to pass it along somewhere. And this is where, yeah, I, I, I totally understand. Like, like we need to be have, have some changes in the CSI, but we're we're going to be making changes anyway to add the metric. So the next step would be it would it would be more code, right? We'd have to have some sort of interface here where we can fill out these values. And maybe there's not maybe there's not an appetite for doing that. And in which case we still have Prometheus, and that's that's fine. But um all I'm saying is we're going to be we're going to be in the same exact spot making a code change and sort of adding this piece where we pass it along somewhere is would be in the exact same spot it would be some a few additional lines the challenge is that interface right like that like we need to have some library i guess you could say that is able to understand the the data structure and where it needs to go that that would be the, the challenge. Yeah, makes sense. So I think I just quickly looked at the PVC metrics and there's just counter metrics. I put the link on in the chat. The metrics seem to be limited to just um, counters. So total number of bound and unbound uh, mm -hmm. metrics. Um, there is no metrics of when first when the PVC was first observed to be in pending or in um, binding or bound state. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's where this belongs. And so like, yeah, bound number by, right. So here we go. So bound number by name, something is calling. Um, so P, yeah, PV, sorry, actually, hold on. So does this look at collector PVC? Oh, it does a list. Oh, so it, someone is calling PV collect and it, and it actually lists them out and then interesting. So they're not even counting whenever they they do a phase change. All right, yes. Interesting. Wow, I can't, I, I'm surprised. I didn't think there would be a list here. So the PV and PVC um, <clears throat> controllers that that manage these things seem to be very archaic and um, like they queue all the PVCs in the work queue every second and then work off them from, uh, from the work queue. So it's not like a normal controller which would like wait on the watch events and you know, respond and reconcile like that. So that that's why I feel like it would be a little bit difficult to, you know, make this work in a very crisp manner. Okay. Phase equals claim. Yeah, look here. Oh, wait, so here's one. Oh, oh so, so it takes a look at the, the list of PVCs. So if it's claim bound, we, I mean, you could do it right here. I mean, I, okay, watch well, No, you can't because this is not, I guess you'd have to measure the Delta is what you have to do. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think like, see, I haven't, got, I haven't dug into this yet, but so lo looking at this, like, 
Yeah, I mean, seeing that they're listing is not encouraging because then, then I'm then I'm guessing that the CSI is not responsible for setting the phases. I thought the interface would have uh, the ability to control when or to have like APIs for changing between the different phases. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. If you, I, I, yeah, I'd have if to you search for uh, mind method, there is, uh, it's in this line, let me say, line 1078. Sorry, where? Oh, it's, it's a different. Give me one second. Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. where the binding happens. So maybe we can, uh, yeah, we Bind can implement. Value, value yeah. bound yeah. claim. Yeah, this right here. We we just do it right here and do this line. Yeah, I mean, see, this is already doing it. So right, we're just logging it to. This is just going to a logger. The whole idea is we just go to Prometheus as well. Yep. So one Z one one zero six updates the status as well. One one zero or one one zero six. One one zero six. Yeah, here we go. So this would be where so it would be the same thing where where or so right here. Uh if there was no error. So this one. So this line would be send out timestamp for the phase transition. And then that second right. line would be the, the um, whatever the interface would be for getting it to the pod, assuming the pod is where we want to put this. OK. Yeah. Oh, what to play around with this. It's pretty cool. I didn't. I had not dug into this yet, but this looks this looks um this looks good. Okay, we'll just have to see how this goes. All right, cool. So anyway, I I think um, kind of back to this. I like I was saying. I I'm I'm really flexible on how we want to do this. It's mo it's mostly about it's mostly about getting these timestamps to the places that people can consume them. So I I mean to me in my mind I, I think I I the reason I kind of started or opened with this is because of this relationship, right? We, we need to have, we can't just have a bi-directional phase transition on its own object. It doesn't, like it's not gonna make sense to anyone. So we have to tie it to something. So we, we sort of need to, um, we need to figure that out. And so at least for me, this was the easiest way I could explain it and visualize it, that it would make sense in the pod. But we um, will, yeah. we'll have to play around with that idea. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one question I had for you here is um, the the part that I don't understand is what is the added benefit that we get from having it in the status that we don't already get from Prometheus. Um, so one thing I heard is that while testing this, we'll have to uh, stand up a Prometheus instance, which may be challenging and some users might not have, might not want to do that or might not have uh, the ability to do that. Uh, so maybe it's worth adding it in the document that the reason why this will be helpful is um, we yeah. then become independent of uh, the monitoring stack. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I haven't gone through this that exercise yet of doing the um because I I don't even have a reason for like why like for the reason for adding these phase transition times. I haven't done that yet. I I kind of skipped ahead to write thoughts about how we a little thoughts about how we could do this. So I agree. We need to we need that as well. Like we need to explain. Like this is, here's the two targeted things that we like. Here's why that we think they're useful for users. Yeah, I, I don't have that. Yeah, we, we can have that. Okay. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, and then that was pretty much it. I think the last thing is I've got some PVC phases. These are just the things, right, that we care about. We want to see going. So PV's got a few of these that goes through, and and then I have never seen lost. I didn't even know that existed. But the um, yeah, I mean, ba basically for this one, it's good. Like we're gonna have. We should see where this will give us how long it takes for PV, like in, in the PVC case, of how long does it take? The idea would be we have this be able to see the, how long it takes from go to from pending to bound, right? Instead of just created all the way to to bound. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, well, I'll keep working on this. This is something that I'm hoping we can talk about next Thursday with uh, with the Kubernetes thing scale. I get a little further along. Yeah, go ahead, Alay. What, what else did you? Yeah, one, one more question I had is yeah. uh, so I think we all agree that regardless of the status discussion, the improvement on the existing Prometheus metric, um, we, we need to expose more metrics on these uh, timestamps. Do you envision that independent of this proposal or um, do you want to handle it here as well? What did you have in mind? Um, what were you thinking? Um, so the so I mentioned right the metrics right now is only a counter of of things, mm -hmm. and we just had a discussion that we should have it in both places, in Prometheus as well as in um, in the status. So the other part, part two of having these metrics reflected in Prometheus, do you envision that as part of this uh, work or is that going to be a separate uh, document? No, that would be in here. So like, so you're talking about like having these timestamps in Prometheus, that would be in here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that, no, that is gonna be one of the, this is another, I, I don't have, I have not mentioned Prometheus and like at all in this document, but that is actually, I, I would think, the way I look at this is Prometheus is like 98% of the, the use cases that people are going to have. This is the, the last 2%. The reason, the reason I, I just like I was saying before, the reason I did not mention it was is, is as a visual. I like not mentioning it yet, I will, but this is a visual because of this sort of the way that we need to figure out because of this problem, like how do we figure out how do we tie these together? Like how we can't take a we, we need to figure we can't take a bi-directional phase transition object and we need to tie it to something. And so this is just an easy way for me to visualize exactly how this would look. Whereas if we were just um if I'm just gonna list out the phase transitions of the objects, I don't think it makes sense. This is just sort of a way for for you as the user to like consume this, like here, like you can, when I tell you it's in the status, you can visual doing a kubectl get on an object, right? And and seeing this here and, and the kind of, you can see how like, okay, here's where I can, here's what this means, right? But I, I totally agree though, there there's going to be Prometheus component to this. It's going to the majority of the focus, but this is just okay, temporary. This sense. is just sort of how we're so, how I'm approaching yeah, it. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I did not, initially fully understand the term. No, no, it's uh, not your fault. I, I didn't I didn't and I didn't have it in the document. <laughs> I, yeah. it was it was so, it was just a work in progress start. I just wanted to explain what these terms yeah. meant. No, I think uh, now now this makes sense. So by by bidirectional what you mean is that the binding happens both in PV as well as uh, PVC, right? And and when when this happens from both the sides, that's that's when it is actually uh, bound, so to speak. Um, yeah, like there's that... like well, it's that we can go is that these phases for PVs can go can go back and forth. Like a PV can go from available, can go to bound, it can go to pending, and it can go back. Like we can we can have a, a bound PV, and then we can have an available PV. We can have a released PV. Like these things go in in different directions. That, that's what I mean. I see. Like you can, so like, okay. look at this way. Like how, how would I track, how would I track a PV's transition times if it can go from, uh, I don't know what the first phase is, available to pending to bound back to available. Like what, why, yeah. like I can't. I think I can't. 
sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, so I was saying that like a PV can be reused, right? So like a PV yeah. is not That's necessarily to ground it to. So therefore, I think it may like it may like it. It makes more sense to put it like either for PVC or pot. Pot pot will make more sense because because I think we can still use PVC. Like I think we can still uh, still reuse PVC, right? So I'm not sure. So there. I'm gonna write what you said, Shane, because it hit it right in the head. PVs can be reused. That's exactly it. Like because VMIs pods can't be reused, right? They go once you're done, they're gone, right? They they can they can't go back to pending phase once you've gone to running. They don't they don't go backwards, right? That's what I mean by bidirectional. This is a better way to say. It. So um, my to my thoughts on this are that PVs are the are not the thing that you use on a pod right pod uses a pvc and pvc can be bound to a pv so regardless of how the pv phase transitions i think if we can capture the transition of pvc that would be more helpful to the end to end startup time of a pod Capture the start time of a PVC, but a PVC can be attached to another PV, isn't it? PVC can be. So I'm um, not okay. Sure. So let's say, um. So let's say, imagine a scenario where we are like there's no there's no dynamic storage class and we're just creating a static PV, right? So how so how you would you would do it is that you would create a bunch of PV in a clusters and then you would like and then you would create PVCs and then that PVCs points to that to uh like to a manual storage class and then in your pod you are basically just using a PVC. Uh so what happens underneath the hood I believe is that um so so Kubernetes will find a PV for this PVC. And once this PVC is attached to to a like to a volume, then that PVC can be bound to the pod. But I think uh I think uh no, the association no, between a PVC. I think there is a difference between attach and bind, right? So what happens in that manual case that you are talking about is a PVC needs to be bound to a volume, which right. sorry, a PV. Um, yeah. So like let's not so sorry. Um so my terminology might not be right, but like let's not um okay, so like so like instead of saying you know bound or attached, let's use a let's use a non-proper term, like right, right. So uh, so like what I'm saying is that a PV and a PVC the like so the mapping between a PV and PVCs doesn't need to be one on one. That's what I'm saying. But however, the mapping between its volume and the pod is one on one. So that means that a pod cannot dynamically hot plot like cannot dynamically hot plot the volume during its phase. Like the pod will have to be destroyed, and and. And we launch like in order to attach to a new volume. Does that make sense? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure about that. But yeah, if that's the case, then things will get more complicated. So is what you're saying we have or. Because pod, because the pod is so pod being unidirectional and has a can have a um, a pod will reference a PVC. Then um, it will always makes it will yeah because um, because a pod will always reference the same volume right. Um, during its life phase, like it's not possible for uh for like for us to 
somehow detach a volume from a pod and then buying a new PVC, which is, you know, which is of entirely different volume to a pod without destroying a pod, right? You, so you're saying, by but, volume, you're saying PVC, like you, you can only have one PVC to a pod, is what you're saying. Right. Yes. That's the uh, one PVC. One PVC. No, no, to no, a no, no. I didn't say that right. So a a um a yeah. So a, a a single PVC can only be used by a single pod. A single PVC can. Yes, that's right. Right. So then we what we're saying what you're saying is like once that pod is gone. Yeah. That PVC's life cycle is now no longer bound to the life cycles of, of the pod. Like it will, right. it will be so. Changed. Yeah. So, like, what if this PVC gets used by other pod? I think that's possible, right? To, um, sorry to interrupt, Shang, but I yeah. think, um, so let's say we have a PVC A, right? That is bound to a persistent volume B, what mm -hmm. you're saying is that same PVC can be bound to a different persistent volume in case of static provisioning? Mm, not during the, not like not while this, uh, like this volume is in use, you will have to destroy the pod, right? Then if you, uh, like if you reattach this PVC to a different pod, then the PV that's associated with this PVC could potentially change because we are not, uh, like we are not explicitly control, like controlling which which PV is this PVC mapping to, like. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. So I because think... this path is not in our control. No, I I think. A single PVC can only be yeah. bound to one PV in its life cycle. It cannot yes. be bound to a different PVs, PV in its life cycle. Yeah. Yes, so I that's... not only do, we, do you have to destroy the pod, but you would also have to destroy the PVC, then create a new PVC to be bound to a different PV. Right? That's... Not necessarily. Like, what if you just destroy a pot, but without destroying a PVC? Then you, uh, then you create a new pot, but using the same PVC. What happens? Yeah. If then you die? the PVC will still be bound to the same PV that previous pod was bound to. So the new pod will see the same data as the old. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because then, then it wouldn't. So right, then doesn't then doesn't matter. Because like, where it doesn't matter to its to that pod because it was created previously, so they're not tied together. It, it, what you're, the argument you're making is that you can't tie a pod. You can't tie the life cycle of the pod to the PVC and PV because you can reuse PVCs. Mm -hmm. So what if you destroy the pot and say that you destroy the PV, but you leave but you leave the PVC alone? Then later you can't, you can't you do, that do that because there is a finalizer on the PV which prevents it to be deleted if its bound PVC still exists in the system. Okay, I see. So okay, I see. Okay, so if that's the case, then I guess, then I guess we can put, then I guess um, the timestamp in the PVC can reflect the status of the PV as well, right? Because they are like one to one. So so sorry, they are like one to one mapped. Correct. Yes. So that's right. what I was suggesting uh, earlier that. Regardless of PV's transition time, as far as the pod is concerned, it will use PVC, right? And all we need to do is track the transition times of a PVC since that has 
that is the interface via which the pod will use the volume. Um, and the the bounding the binding action between PV and PVC has to be atomic. So both the timestamps can be inferred if we just track uh, PVC timestamps. At least that that was my understanding of these API. I see. Um, then I guess um, in so so based on what you're saying, like Ale, do you think in like um, the PV phase transition time can be moved under PVC? And PVC phase transition time can be moved under uh, under the status field of a pod. Um, Is that right? No, a so the understanding behind the concept is right, but I don't think we can still do that. The reason being, mm -hmm. so let's say if you have a PVC A that is bound to a PVC B, sorry, that is bound to a persistent volume B. The persistent mm -hmm. volume B can have a retain policy. So after you delete uh, PVC A, PV B can still exist in the system because the retention policy is retained. And then mm -hmm. you can have a different PVC, PVC C, that can bind to PVP. But that's okay though, because shouldn't the, at that, so then this volume bound, so the, what we need to clarify on these phases then. So the, the, wouldn't that, when we delete the PVC, it's not gonna stay in bound, right? Don't we when go we to- delete the, Yeah, we go to release it, yeah. And, and, then, and it. then we attempt, we create a new PVC, the PVC is created. Yeah, so the transition would be from bound to release, and then the transition will be from release to bound. It would skip the pending. Oh, okay, so release to bound, okay. Okay, I think, but the, the to Shang's point is interesting because it's like, it's like what we're saying, the PVC controls this, these states, right? And so yeah. the Shang's point is that the way to visualize this is because it does, it's train the, the transition timestamp should be on the PVC, right? That's the idea. Yeah, and no, the same that thing part, here. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, the, the final point was that the pod controls the PVC uh, phases. So the pod would have the timestamp. Uh -huh. That part, I was not clear about the second part is in the pod, but the pod is only using that PVC, right? It does not control any of these phases. Okay, so we can't, okay. So I thought when we, when we create the pod, it goes to pending. So no, it's bound, it's bound when it's, it's to the PVC. It's not, it's not enough to do with the pod. So is there like a, is there like another, um, Okay, I think we need more information then because I, I don't, yeah, we need to understand the so relationship think, as to what controls these phases. Yeah, I think, Ryan, where you are getting a little bit, um, what is a little bit confusing is that some PVCs are kind, have this policy where they wait for the first consumer. So until the pod doesn't start and doesn't use that PVC, they go, they stay in pending state and only after a pod is explicitly created that is you using that uh, PVC, it goes to a bound state. But that's just a policy on the PVC. It's not specifically a controlling behavior. Yeah. Okay. I think, I, well, I, I kind of, I mean, I'm glad we talked about this. We got into more of the details, but um, yeah, I mean, this is basically what I'm going to need to spend more time on this. We need to, we need to, it needs to be clear of those phases, right? And like where these where these go. But this was a good conversation. I'm glad we, we kind of talked about it in, in this way. I think let's see. Um I can do some more research and we can we can talk some more next week. See if this is ready to bring to the Kubernetes scale if we've got enough here. But I we're at time, so I, I think I'm gonna end it here, but we can um we'll follow up on this or I'll, I'll follow up with everyone on this.
Okay. Thanks. Thanks for putting yeah. this together. Yeah. Good discussion, guys. All right. Thank you very much. Wanted to hear. All right. Have a good day, guys. See ya.